Okay, once more, um, I think uh, we can just uh, start immediately, please. Let's start, because it's, is it up to 15 minutes? I'll come over here later. I think we are 18 the number we can, I think we are, we are good to go, basically. We are very, very good to go now. Um, two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. Two seconds. Okay, um, good evening, everybody. Uh, you're all welcome to this uh, webinar, Introduction to, uh, to Unity Bot, a unified um, IoT uh, platform. And thank you for finding time to join us. But um, once more, we have about 19 of us already um, on this platform, which I think is very, very okay, satisfactory, absolutely. So we drive harder now. So please, let's have some house rules, okay? First of all, please, you don't talk until you're asked to talk. Very, very important. You don't talk, okay? If you want to talk, you have to raise up your hand. You can leave your video on and what have you. Then intermittently, I may have to stop to take some questions, okay? I'm not, I'm not too fast in typing, so I prefer you when, you know, some questions, um, you, know, uh, you know, vocally, because I, I can't multitask easily. I have so much I'm doing alone here. Yeah? And um, what so this very presentation or webinar is made up into two is made up of two parts. Uh, the first part is our presentation PowerPoint, which I will take you through. And the presentation I will be thinking about the SS. What is the big deal about Unity Board? What problem has Unity Board solved? What is normal? Okay, what I mean, what makes it different from what is in the market? What makes it different from the Raspberry Pi? What makes it different from Arduino? What makes it you know different from PC Duino? you know, orange pie, you know, and, you know, and so on and so forth. And then they go be this on demo today. I didn't plan to do a demo. I wanted to have a some completely different seminar for, for, for demo. It makes a lot of sense anyway. But I feel we can try to squeeze in. At least let's do the basic demos normally, we would normally have on the Arduino, maybe your flashing of your uh, LED and so on and so forth, just to show that it is a compatible with Arduino platform, which is one of the biggest open source hardware platform, okay? So thank you very, very much. So uh, without, uh, and again, I would like to also mention to you that the champion of this board is actually the current Minister of um, Communications and Digi Digital Economy, Dr. Sali Ibrahim. He's one that actually championed the design of the board with a contribution from my boss, uh, the Director General and CEO of NITDA, Kashif Inwa Abdullahi, and also contributions from my uh, humble source, that's humble self anyway. So this very unity board is, uh, is proudly an Nigerian product, okay? Designed them um, with particularities uh, in mind for sustainability. And it has a dual purpose. It has the educational you know, uh, purpose. It also has what they call the field application purpose. So we have a kind of a dual usage of the board, which is, not too, which is almost not there in the market or in the industry. So I will share my screen and then start the presentation. And, and then I will start the... Um, the PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation immediately, so we can save more time, uh, you know, for the for the practical. So you're welcome once more. Just give me a couple of time to, you know, to get into my PowerPoint. Yeah? Two seconds. I think it's already okay. Fine. Um, we are here already. What the hell is okay? Fine. Here. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. That's screen too. Okay. Please, if you can see this, if you can see the PowerPoint, you know, let me know. Yes, it's, a, it's, it's okay. Clear. Okay, fine. It's okay. Fine. Yeah, so bear with me. I think I'll get into this is actually my first time using Zoom. 
I mean, for <laughs> as, a, as a host. So there's first time for everything, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, fine. Let me start the uh, PowerPoint, uh, you know, uh, presentation without um, wasting uh, much time. Uh, introduction to Unity Board, the Unified um, IoT platform. I want you to pay attention to this very word called, um, you know, that word Unified. You know, is a very very strategic and key word in this very very presentation. And as the presentation goes on. Uh, you understand why um, you know that word uh, unified came into there, and again I'll be trying to let people in because at the same time I created a waiting room uh, to let people. In. So please, I'll be pausing to share my screen, and then try to see how I can let uh, people in. But if I can ask you a question, are you just seeing the PowerPoint presentation, or you are seeing some other thing on it? Henry, please, Henry, can you answer the question, Henry? Are you just seeing the PowerPoint? Is the screen clear? Okay, I have to, I have to, I have to unmute you. Unmute yourself, Henry. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yes, you can talk now. We can. We can All right. The PowerPoint. Please, one person at a time. There's a house rule. Don't talk, please, or you raise up your hand. Let, let's get all that. John, you're welcome. Henry, can you see the screen? Is it clear? Yeah, very clear. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let me proceed. I'll let more people in. People are asking me to let them in. So let me uh, let them in, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So some of you that can uh, use Zoom very well, maybe you could help me out if I run into problem. Okay. Fine. So um, two seconds. Two seconds. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Okay. Now uh, I would like to take us all of the big, uh, you know, back into history. Um, you know, nowadays we are told that we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Personally, I don't agree. I don't agree with that. I categorically, I categorically disagree because I feel now should be we should have what is sixth industrial revolution. I will explain why. The first industrial revolution was when man discovered the four tools using stones. You know, cut stones, sharpen stones for hunting and for you know dissecting the animal. They're using it now, you know, as a spear. That was the first industrial revolution to me. For the, I mean, how mankind, or what we call the modern, um, the homo sapiens, were able to come up with that idea that stones can actually be utilized, you know, for hunting purposes or what have you. That's actually the big truth. That's for me the first industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution to me now is the pyramid. You know, that's a whole technology, a high technology that was used to build pyramid. Imagine boulders, blocks weighing over a ton being lifted to that height. There must be some technology that would have done that. So that technology was existing there. So we, can, we cannot jump it and come to the steam engine era. Okay, Morocco is an African technology. So is it because it's coming from Africa, people don't consider it as, as, a, as a technological breakthrough or as a technological revolution? So now, that brings me now to the so-called first industrial revolution, uh, powered by water, you know, steam engine. Uh, we, we all had about a James Watt, and so on and so forth, locomotive and, uh, now, and what have you. Well, officially, I mean, that is what is accepted in the whole world as the first industrial revolution. But for me, it's actually my third industrial uh, revolution. Uh, then the next one is, uh, is the manufacturing. You know, Henry Ford came in, created a revolution when he introduced what he called the assembly line. That improved productivity and then reduced the cost of um, ownership of some of those uh, cars make there, those there. Then the third one is electronics. PLCs, when the first IC came out from transistors now, they made IC packing more transistors into it. You know, but what to know to that is integrated uh, 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 circuit. The same thing goes for uh, some of our processors. If a 3 ACs processors, you are having like 276,000, is it 276,000 transistors, I think, if I'm not mistaken? Is it, I think, 1,000? Today, processor like Core i7 has 2.2 billion transistors. That's a space of 30 years already. So there's a big technological leap here. And every day, you know, new things are being found and it's, you know, we keep, uh, you know, moving up, uh, you know, up, up the, the ladder. Then the fourth one, of course, is where we are right now, you know, cloud smart, you know, connected devices and so on and so forth. So with the fourth industrial revolution, that is where data comes to play. Data becomes gold, data becomes oil, data becomes very, very strategic because without data, you can't plan. Without data, you may not have visibility. 
without data even, you can't do AI. Artificial intelligence is based on data. That's what it called, I mean, for me, the high level AI. Go. You can do the low level. That's where you have your sensors or what have you. The high level AI, you need data to be able to um, achieve that. Okay. Now, what's the current trend? Just as I mentioned, technology changes. So, so what COVID-19 did, uh, the pandemic, over 82%, you know, of the traditional learning process was basically, you know, disrupted. You know, people had to go online. And for Nigeria, that became a blessing, okay? For us now, this very webinar, ordinarily, we would have uh, uh, appreciated, um, you know, coming, you know, coming online. So right now, there's, there's online meetings and what have you. So much so that even the Federal Executive Council approved, you know, online activities as being legal. Now that means we can have meetings online and document it. They said to with the CAC. So instead of having a physical board meeting now, CAC also has come up with a new, I think they call it CAM or something like that. We are basically now online meetings are recognized. And for Nigeria now, this is driving digital literacy, especially digital inclusion. So more people are coming online and that is actually, you know, uh, helping us a lot. So there's also a good part to the COVID-19, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, there's a good part to the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Now the fourth industrial revolution is characterized by, you know, digital, biological, and physical war. That's where they come, the fusion of these three, uh, you know, components. And then, you know, you have trends like I would have mentioned, AI, robotics, and so on and so forth. Please, if I'm too fast, somebody should tell me if I'm too fast, please. I'm just looking at the time. Is my pace okay for some of you? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, I hope I'm not too fast, eh? Okay, fine. So um, I will move on, yeah? So, um, you know, nowadays we'll talk about emerging technologies. I want us to have a look at some of those um, key emerging technologies uh, uh, we have today, uh, you know, we virtual reality. We're talking about that, Internet of Things, and so on and so forth. The World Bank was most to be frank. I'm not a biologist, but uh, we had an official trip to um, to Australia, and to be frank, we were taken into what they call gene editing. I was so shocked how much science can do now, you know, to gene editing. I'll give a typical example what, when I talk about gene editing. I mean, the scientists now have gone so far that okay. When a calf is born, that is the young of a cow is born, okay? At that bet, at that infancy stage, they're able to determine if it's going to produce milk more or it's going to produce beef. So at that stage, they already know where it's going to produce high milk or not high milk based on the gene editing and, and what have you. They said to with the grass they eat, they do some editing where they, you know, they kind of um, engineer some of this grass, you know, for higher nutrients and so on and so forth. I mean, they've really, the technology has really, really gone far. But what I believe is that we Nigerians, especially Africans, understand that we may have international people coming in, but I'd like to use Nigeria as an example. In as much as we have this technology, it's very, very important for us to look at the areas, you know, that are very peculiar to us, the areas that, that we need now. You don't have to get things you don't need now. You cannot have all of them. It's very, very important to see some of those emerging areas that we can adopt not only adopting, then adaptation is very, very necessary. We adopt and adapt. When you adapt, that is when you can have sustainability. When you don't adapt, it fails because you cannot bring Western realities or Western technology to third world reality. It's a problem. And that's why some of the projects fail in third world countries because you, you, you copy it from, you know, from a Western country or, or more advanced country, then you come and paste it you know, in a third world country you know, forgetting the realities on ground. So it is very important for us to carry out uh, adaptation, absolutely. Then when we talk about uh, IoT, you know, people have a thousand and one definition of uh, IoT. For me, uh, IoT is basically an interface between the physical world and the cyber world, simple as that, you know? The interface between the internet and the physical world, basically. A particular example is your network printer. Okay, I could stay here, send signal, it prints, and the printer get my paper out. That paper is a physical entity that comes out. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, where there's data exchange, of course, data processing, transmission, all these things also, you know, involved in these. Um, uh, how do I put it? Uh, IoT. For me, we have four major C of IoT. 
computation, control, connectivity, and cloud. Now, when we talk about computation, that is where your software comes in, your firmware. Uh, sometimes most of us don't understand what is firmware, software, and hardware. I think I use this opportunity to touch the issue of uh, firmware, software, and hardware, okay? Uh, I think hardware is very clear, you know, basically, you know, that is your metal and so on and so forth, you know, your hard disk and, you know, so on and so forth. Now, software is clear, basically, it's your normal programming and what have you. Firmware is where people get it confused, okay? Firmware is what sits in the, between hardware and software, okay? Firmware is like a fourth state of matter. Okay, we have solid liquid gas. The first state is what we call plasma. Plasma is like your akamu. If I ask you akamu, is your akamu solid or liquid? Akamu that you drink now, is it solid or liquid? I think it's in between. So the firmware falls in between the hardware and the software. What does that mean? It means that as a firmware developer, as a firmware engineer, all your programming now you're doing has electrical implications. That means you must have the knowledge of you know, electronics and what have you, because it's different from your mainframe programming where nothing happens to the PC itself, everything is just done, you know, but your firmware one, embedded programming has some electrical implication. And most people that are embedded programmers, they are also called firmware developers as well. Then the control now comes in. The control is actually, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, where the hardware comes in, the physical work comes in, and that is where the physical work comes in, okay? Control means that I'm sending signal to something that can be actuated, something that can be switched. I can take signal as well inside through sensors, then I can give a signal now to carry out the actuation. I'm, I'm just seeing a mistake I mean, It's actually actuation, please. There's no I there. It's actuation I wanted to, it's a small typo here. Then the connectivity is your networking, okay? In IoT, as you generate data, as you carry out sensing of your environment, you must transmit that to a pipe. There must be a medium of transmission. That is where your connectivity comes in. Your transmission could be maybe through your cellular network. Your transmission could be maybe point to point. It could be through your Wi-Fi. It could be through your satellite. It doesn't matter, okay? But there must be that pipe, that medium, where you have to transmit your data, maybe to a back end, maybe to a cloud application, or what we call broker platform. And the last now is what we call the cloud. Okay, the cloud is actually your database. But in IoT, we actually use broker, or what we call a, a cloud, okay? Which I will explain them, um, you know, as we move on on this. Now, um, I would like to introduce you to the generic um, architecture. That is from my own perspective. That's, 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 that's my whole, that's, this is how I visualize it myself, okay? I mentioned about the broker platform. Actually, that should, there should have been an arrow here. Can you see the, the, the mouse? Is the mouse visible there, please? Yes. Okay, but so I'm using the mouse now, you know, because there was no time to put the arrow. So this is the broker platform. Okay, this broker platform is actually your database. It's actually your cloud application that may be running. Now you have your RT, your remote terminal units, which I could call maybe kind of front end. Let me put the remote front end. That's where your data acquisition comes in. We call it DAC, data acquisition platform. DAQ platform comes in, okay? That is the role our Unity board plays. It acquires data through sensor. It can have what they call institute also processing of data. I will explain what that means. So the Unity board is here, okay? And then the Unity board has sensors connected to it. So the sensor we have today is a thermometer. We have a digital thermometer, DS1820. We'll be demonstrating how, you know, the temperature will be pushed to the cloud application. We'll try to do the demo part here. So the sensor is connected to the Unity board, for, for example. So the sensor can actually talk to you. You can talk to the sensor. At the same time, now your commutation comes in now. Your commutation is actually, you know, you could use the, the word also actuation, where you can switch 220 volt, you can switch this, switch that. That is where this comes in. So this sensor commutation is connected to Unity board. Now, Unity board now, in turn, this is where the communication pipe comes in. This is where the pipe comes in. I mean, we, we talk about this, this is where the connectivity comes in here between the broker and Unity board, because the data for Unity board needs to be transmitted to the broker. Okay, that's the cloud. Therefore, the broker now is a client or subscriber. A subscriber could be your handset or your mobile device, where as you query, as you query, you know, or request information, it actually gets this information that is already transmitted from here to here. I, I think it is clear now, okay? 
No, no, I mentioned about uh, now we're talking about uh, industrial uh, 4.0, which is also part of the fourth industrial revolution. And I would like to mention that IO team is very, very critical as it forms one of the fundamental stones of industry 4.0. Now I will digress a bit, okay? You know, um, now in engineering, I'm hoping that I have a lot of engineers now. I'm a mechanical engineer myself, but we, we, we all engineers should understand that it is no longer business as usual. Any solution you're coming with, any product you're coming with, be it civil, be it mechanical, be robotics, whatever, there's need for what we call predictive maintenance. Very, very important. There's need for you to have visualization of a remote device you have deployed somewhere a thousand kilometers. It is very, very key. For example, I mean, mechanical engineer have designed maybe um, a block molding machine. I should be able to integrate also the capability of being able to visualize this performance remotely. I should be able to see, you know, the temperature of the engine oil there. I should be able to see the refs, the revolution per minute and wire, but for me to know the performance. And it also helps me get data, you know, for my future design to see where I can improve. Meaning that IoT is very, very key for all our endeavors now, be civil or what have you, you know, since you need data. Because IoT is basically a data generating platform <laughs> where you have this data, you push it to a platform that can do your data analytics, your AI, and so on and so forth. Now, um, you know, I'm, stick, I'm gradually taking my time before I come to the transition of the Unity board. I'm trying to lay foundation of what they call groundwork. So as I'm taking my time now, now, there's all called the hardware challenges constraint in existing box. There are a lot of box out there, we all know. Uh, one of the most popular is the Arduino Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned already, Unity, but what is the big deal about it? What is novel? What problem has it solved that is there? Because any new solution coming out of product must be novel. That means you're coming up with something new, coming up with the news, not telling us what, what we knew. Now, what we did was that we studied the existing board, the existing ecosystem, and we came up with, you know, some of the features we feel that if, if we are able to solve, it will actually create flexibility and speed up development time or call time to market. The first is cost and availability of shields. Arduino uses a thousand shields out there, which most of the time you want to maybe, for example, let me use a quick example. You want to you know, do your, your connectivity, maybe you want to push data to the cloud. That means you will need a GSM shield. That means you have to go to Alibaba, order it. It will take time, they want to come in, that means you have to wait. So what we did was that to look at the basic shields that are needed and we integrated it onto the body. So that saves you the pain of having to go to, you know, of having to wait for long to get the shield and also the cost as well. You know, this I will, I will, I will break down. Again, today I put 22 volts, sorry, it's 220 volts, not 22 volts. That one should be 220 volts. Wait, I'll have to correct this, I bet you. It's actually 220 volts, corrected? Yes, it's corrected. Yeah, so- Corrected, yes. Any, any mistake, let me know. Now, now it is to talk about smart cities. You know, smart cities, you know, smart homes, intelligent home, everything. Everything to do with smart technology requires switching. In Nigeria, our mains voltage is 220 to 240 volt. Now the issue is that I want to do smart, you know, you know smart house or intelligent house. I want to come in and say, my TV, switch on, okay? How do I switch on 220 volts without having to go and doing some hacking or without having to go and buy special shield again, which I have to pay money for and wait to be delivered to Nigeria, you know, or to Ghana or to any part of the world. That takes time, it's money. So these are some of the problems we saw. Most boards in the market cannot handle 220 volts. The Unity board now came up with a solution where it can switch directly to 220 volts. Today, I uh, will demonstrate that using a bulb. I think I've shown to some of you that came early. We try to switch a 220 volt bulb from the Arduino bulb. Basically, it's, using, it's like using five volts to control, uh, using five volt DC, TTL logic level to control 220 volt DC. Now, the next problem we are solving, or the board is solving, is the problem of the interface. Raspberry Pi uses 3.3 volts. We all know that. And if you use a five volt signal to talk to a Raspberry Pi 3.3 volt, the board, the board gets burnt out. It doesn't work. So it's an issue. And now the, the whole technology is moving towards low voltage. From 5 volt to half 3.3 volt, they are moving even towards 1.8 volt. Now, how do we handle a shield, a sensor that is 
3.3 votes and then your board is five votes. How do you handle it? The problem was solved on Unity Board by creating a special voltage you know, translation circuit. A four channel bidirectional, very, very fast. You could do up to even 10 megahertz. It's very, very fast, high speed, you know, which I will share with you. That problem was, was solved. What does that mean? That means that I can plug a three volt device on one end, plug a five volt device on the other end, and there'll be bidirectional communication without having issue. Most of you that are used to Arduino will understand what I'm talking about. Arduino is a five volt device. Sometimes have a shield that is 3.3 volt. It's not struggling with the voltage regulator or whatever. So that problem has been solved there on Unity board. Again, it's inaccessibility of pins. A typical Arduino board is that once you plug your shield onto the socket, it blocks other pins. So you don't have access to other pins that are blocked. You know, whether you want it or not, it's already, it covers the whole pin. But in this Unity board, we solve the problem. Yes, we still have the shields. The socket for the sheets or unity board, which I will show, I will show you as time goes on. Not only that, we brought up what they call pin matrix to the front of the board. You know, so you can have your shield onto the socket. Then those pins that you need, you still have access to them. I think this is very, very brilliant. You know, very wonderful. It creates flexibility for you, and then you have more latitude. You know, for your project. And that, another thing we saw was the issue of communication. Most boards don't come with GSM GPRS module. They don't. They don't come with Wi-Fi. They don't come with Bluetooth. Most of them may come maybe with a USB cable. But then we solve the problem because we want that flexibility for people to have it. If I have a hotspot, for goodness sake, why should I waste my money transmitting data through mobile or cellular network? It doesn't make sense. So if I have your Wi-Fi, if I have a hotspot, I should be able to have your Wi-Fi module that will hook up to my Wi-Fi. I'm transmitting data. That is where the Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi comes. I could transmit through Bluetooth as well. Okay, comes in. GSMG GSMJ So Unity Board has solved this problem, created play, uh, play flexibility of various communication pipes where it can relate data you know, to a back. Another now is what we call timestamp. Timestamp. There's what we call data logging or you know, data logging or data acquisition. There's need for timestamp. Timestamp means that if I'm transmitting data from a river, you know, Sokoto, I should have a time that data is going. And that is why onboard real time clock is very, 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 very important. And that's actually what, um, what um, Unity Board has solved. It has done, uh, you know, an onboard real time clock, you know, and one of the most accurate in the world. It has uh, DS3231. And why it is very, very accurate clock is that it's a closed loop um, device. I use what they call TCXO, Temperature Compensated Crystal Oscillator. Meaning that as the temperature is increasing, it is compensating, then it keeps the time. The delta is highly, highly reduced. Another big challenge in most of these existing platform, existing bodies are you cannot draw up to one amp. For example, I have a DC motor I want to drive directly from my board. I have a stepper motor, server motor, or what have you. They have maybe one amp rating or what have you. The regulator they have on board there cannot supply one amp. So this is a problem we solve here. We have a 3.3 vote regulator on board unity but i can give you as much as five amp i'm not mixing what five amp if you doubt me i can give you the name of the regulator you, you google it and check the data sheet we also have a five volt at five amp so we have increased now the power handling capability of, of the board which most boards don't have i, I don't even want to mention the raspberry pi here anyway basically i don't think it's what they call the imu imu is very important as initial measurement unit Unity board comes with an accelerometer gyroscope. That means for those of us that are into drones, they want to create an autopilot system. It makes it very, very handy. Everything is on board already. You don't need to buy any shield. You don't need to do what they call, you know, hacking, breadboarding. We have to get a Vero board, use a thousand and thousand wire to connect. That problem is solved here because everything is integrated onto the board. You just need to just activate, um, you know, the device or module whenever it is, um, yeah, it is needed. Again, it's a remote uh, programmability. No, uh, remote programmability is that I don't know yet of any board that you can program directly through the Bluetooth. Channel. Unity board came with that features. Why? Because we believe that in digital inclusion, we know in rural areas of Nigeria, most people can't afford computer, laptop, or what have you. But most people have Android phones, thank God. So what we did that was that we created a special circuit where you can pair your phone with the board and then program to phone, PSM phone wirelessly through Bluetooth channel. I think this is wonderful. That means that if I have my ordinary cheap Android phone and I can't afford a laptop, I don't have to wait for a laptop. 
I just have to just pair my phone with the board and I'm programming our movie. You know, this is another problem we solve on the board. It's what we call OTA. What is what they call over the air? Over the air is what, what they call remote programming of your board. Okay. You don't want to connect wire. You have deployed your board in the field. Your board is a thousand kilometers from you, or your board is five meters from you. You don't want to go there to be able to be programming. Through the Bluetooth channel, you can do your over the air programming. For example, if I've designed a robot that is moving around and I want to change the firmware, update it, I must not stop the robot to put a USB cable to do that. No, I just send the channel, I just put my, send the whole firmware through the Bluetooth channel, you update it without even you knowing. So that we implemented, again, is sound, piezo. I love tunes. I love tones, tunes, melody, ring tones. Most board don't have that, you know? Piezo is not there, speakers are not there. So Unity board comes with a speaker, I mean, piezo, sorry, piezo it comes with a piezo. So with this piezo, you can create alarms, tunes, and uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So as I mentioned already, these are some of the problems that Unity board is already solving. And that is, and that's, what, and that's a big deal actually, when, when you look at the board. Now, these are some of the existing solutions I've mentioned. These are as Arduino, you know, very, very popular. I think it's the most popular board now for hobbyists and for beginners, especially. Raspberry Pi 3, there's actually Pi 4 right now. Just for some of you that may not, most, at, 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 but some of you that have never seen Arduino board, that's what it looks like. Raspberry Pi board, that's what it looks like, okay? Um, now, this is where we come in. Permit me to present to you the almighty Unity board, IOTA Steam Education Kit. As I mentioned already, you know, all the features I mentioned you can see here. This is the Bluetooth here. This is the Bluetooth. Um, can you see the mouse, please? Can you see the mouse here? Yes, yes. So, so this is the Bluetooth here, as I mentioned. So all the features I'll be talking about, I'll be pointing them out here one by one. This is the Bluetooth here. Um, this is our ESP 8260s. Most of us are used to this model already. That can act as an AP and also a client. Can act, act as an access point and a client. I don't know if most of you understand, know that anyway. Then this is our GSM GPRS model. This is it over here. Yeah, we're using SIM 800L. Why? SIM 800L is actually cost effective because we want the board to be affordable. That is why we are very, very careful the cost and the quality of the components that came on board. So we did a lot of research to make sure we get the right thing that is cost effective so that, so that an average man on the street should be able to afford this very board, okay? So we have our Bluetooth, we have our ESP A2, A26C here, then we have our GSN GPRS SIM 800L. Okay, you can, you can go through some of these things as well, as we're speaking now. Uh, then again, I mentioned about a pin matrix. So look at the sockets here where the sheets normally go in. This one line is the second line of the sockets. So the moment you put a shield here, it blocks all other pins here. So you don't have access. So what we did here in Unity Board was we're able to bring out this pin matrix here. Look at the pin matrix here. This is my mouse here. This is the pin matrix that I will show you, okay? If you look, you can see D1, D2, D3, up to D10 here, you know, the white one starts, you know, and so on. Then the 5 volt is here, the 3 volt is here, the triple, sorry, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and also your ground. Now, pay particular attention where we have colored, you know, connectors here. This is blue, white, because this board is also meant for kids. That is why we introduced some coloring. So as you're teaching kids in primary school, secondary school, we're able to, you know, reference one of these easily. You can see the blue one here, you know, the red one, the white one. That's what we started to use some coloring here. And it has been really, very, 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 very efficient. Now, again, um, you know, um, most of us that understand that have used a, a digital thermometer with one wire protocol like a DS1820, we understand that you have to always um, use, a, what is it called? You have to always use a pull-up resistor, uh, maybe 4.7 kilo ohm, up to maybe 10 kilo ohm before it could work. As a matter of fact, most of the sensors that comes on board, most of the time you have to use pull-up resistors. So again, that means you have to start doing breadboard. You have to bring another Vero board, drop your resistor, the wire it, put it to our Arduino or whatever. That problem will solve immediately. How do you solve that problem? You created here is it a special socket for, for, for your you know, thermometer. This is a special socket for Dallas DS 1821. 1820, you don't need to wire whatever. You just drop it in here, put your jumper here, and it's on, simple as that, okay? The same thing we did in the gas sensor, MQ series, which I've shown here. 
the gas sensor as well. Look at it, it has its own socket here. Yeah, because we know that environment sensing is very, very key. You know, so we put those basic devices, you know, the, 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 the ability or possibility to uh, implement it easily and effortlessly on board. So this one is our gas sensor here. Then this is the piezo here. That's the sound that emits the sound. Okay. And again, as I come here, this is where your AI comes in as well, your gesture sensor. You know, already made here. You just have to just drop the sensor onto the board and it is working. Now, with your gesture sensor, it senses light. It senses if your hand is moving from right to left, left to right, up, down, or what have you. Not only that, it breaks down the component of light to RGB, red, green, blue. And for smart technology, for example, smart, smart farming, I can apply this in the field to know even where my crops are growing. That means if I apply it in the field, the component of green will be increasing as more greenery is increasing. So there are areas of application. I just gave, I just gave a, you know, a very fast uh, example. Um, I've shown this. And again, here we have also a matrix of LED. When I started my embedded programming, I started with a PIC 16F84. Some of you call it a PIC uh, made by microchip, but the right pronunciation actually is PIC. Peripheral interface control is actually pronounced PIC by the manufacturers, not PIC, PIC. So I started programming with uh, PIC 16F84. Then later I moved on to PIC 16F628A and so on and so forth. What fascinated me most was what they call animation of light. Okay, what they call working light. How do you make a, a light to walk from back to front, from to back, different sequence. So that really helped my programming. So the same thing I, we introduced on Unity board here is it LED, eight of them. So you can actually program, you know, working light and animation of light and what have you. Now with such program, you can even expand it to advertising the various signages. You know, once I've seen some signages in clubs, you know, in a, in a, you know, in exhibition where animation of lights are, are done. So with this, you can actually extend it externally and create various animations. So this is a very good platform to practice, uh, you know, the art of animation of light or lighting or, or what have you. Now, RGB is very important. If you talk about uh, post with um, modulation today, post with modulation. That is where your RGB, this RGB LED comes in here. It's on board as well. So you can do what they call color mixing and so on and so forth. Then of course, these are two, two digit seven segment display also on board here. Um, again, what do we have here? Your read time clock is here. Your memory is here. Some of them are under these um, two modules. And again, I want to point out the memory, okay? Now we talk about data. So what we did on this Unity board was that we created a very big memory to be able to hold, you know, data, large, large data. We have solid state 16 megabyte, no megabit. It has 16 megabyte memory on board, solid state. Most of you that are programming will understand that this is huge. 16 megabyte SPI memory, very, very fast, up to 10 megahertz it can do as well. Everything is on board here. And your battery here, your backup battery for the RTC real time uh, clock. And again, you're switching for 220 volts, this is it. This is the input to 20 volts here. This is the output. As you can see, it's a solid state relay with a snubber. The snubber means that you can drive inductive load here. You can do what they call throttling, throttling or modulation of the load as well without you know, having much problem with the power factor of your AC circuit. So this is on board already. So this enables you to control 220 volts. This will do today. This I'll definitely make sure I demo how this part works. I think most of you will be uh, very, very interested. The accelerometer is somewhere here I mentioned. The accelerometer has six degrees of freedom. X, Y, a gyroscope, sorry, X, Y, Z, accelerometer, X, Y, Z, the gyroscope. As well. so it can be used for uh, auto, autopilot and uh, so on and so forth. Um, I think I've touched most of what I mentioned um, over here. I don't think I'm leaving all that. I'm going very straight to the next, um, to the next. So um, what I'll do now is that, uh, I will stop you and take some 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 uh, questions, please. So, if, if you want to ask some questions, just go ahead, please. Yeah, good day, sir. Okay, want to ask? Okay, sorry, uh, Chinyeri Webe. I'll start with Chinyeri Webe. Okay, so I will mute you now. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Can you unmute yourself and ask question? Chinyeri. Chinyeri. Are you unmute? Okay. I'm unmuting you now. It's not unmuting. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Chinyere. 
Okay. Yes, I've admitted myself. Good day. Yeah, good day. You're welcome, please. Can I have your patience, please? Any question now? Sorry. Any question? I'm interested and um, kind of I'm doing two things at the same time. I'm in a program, but I was actually glued to this. And I like what you are doing. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll call you back and uh, as a follow-up because I love the STEAM in education. It's very, very pertinent at this moment. Thank you okay. so much for what you're doing. Okay, you're welcome. Eh? You're welcome. We're communicating. At the end of this um, webinar, I'll be shooting out um, a survey for all of you to fill. And uh, that will create a platform for more communication. I could ask some more, more questions on them, uh, maybe uh, through email and what have you, okay? So I will unmute uh, Uduma, John. Okay, John, you can ask your question, please. Uh, hello. Good, good day, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, Sorry, sir. I just wanted to know um, you didn't you didn't talk um, about the microcontroller on the board, um, but I think we'll be more interested to hear about okay. that. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, John. I actually assume that people should know it is a Atmega three two eight. I think it's a very popular microcontroller that is in a Arduino Uno. So what we did was to create a seamless and painless migration to the Unity board platform. We decided to maintain some of the architecture of the uh, Arduino that people are already used to. We decided to leave the same controller on board. We decided to give, leave the same geometry of the uh, sockets for the shield, you know, for interoperability and seamless and uh, painless uh, migration. So it is actually at mega three to eight clock at 16 megahertz. 16 megahertz uh, clock. I hope I've answered that very question. I hope I've answered that question. Um, wait, again, let me yes, see. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, um, okay. 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 Go ahead, Oyeka. Okay, good day, sir. Yeah, good day, Oyeka. You're welcome. Yeah, sir. Thank you very much for the presentation. I have a, you made mention of a programming the board using your smartphone. Yes, yes, yes. So, how is, how is, how is that possible? Which uh, application? Is it Android or OS? So, which app can you be able to write the code on? Okay, I'll lower your hand. I'll answer the question. Let me lower your hand. Uh, thank you, Oyeka, for the question. Uh, actually, there's an application called Blueino. Blueino. Blueino, there's a lot out there. Check is uh, is uh, is on Play Store. Uh, it's, it's an Android Play. Store. I mean, is it um? There's a Play Store. Blueino is spelled okay, as sir. B L U I N O. There's a paid version and there's a free version. Blueino has it there. So it is very Blueino. It, it has a, it has the possibility to pair the board. So what we did was that the Bluetooth we have on board was really configured. We configured the Bluetooth to have a board rate of 115200. The same board rate as if you're programming through with your USB cable. Put to transmit um, you know, information there. How we achieve it is a special secret and is our secret. Okay, but who could still share it with you? How we're able to achieve it, how we're able to do those timing reset to be exactly within 10 milliseconds. It took us time to experiment, but finally got it. If it is possible. I will demo, but I hope that some of you that are in Abuja here we can actually organize where we can have a physical demo in TD for Pi Hub in Kujie. And TD for Pi are actually the manufacturers uh, of the board. But you know, that we can talk. And as I mentioned already, this is the first webinar. Our subsequent webinars will identify areas of interest. That's why where, that's where the survey is very important, where one can uh, you know, you know, concentrate uh, more. Okay, I'll ask uh, Josiah Akiloye to ask question, please. Right. Good evening. I am Josiah Kinoye. Yeah, my question is, what's the cost of the board? And also, does the board have an external uh, storage, like maybe an external micro SD card? And what's the RAM and the internal storage? Thank you. Okay, Josiah, thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm, I think I've answered your question previously, but I'll still go ahead. I told you when I was, uh, when I was making the presentation, it has onboard SPI, 16, 16 megabytes. Yes, megabyte on board, 16 megabyte. So I don't need my SD card or what have you. The problem with SD card is that if you put it in a very rugged terrain, maybe in an industrial environment, they, they, they run into problem. Where there's high humidity, temperature and whatever, you know, most, most of you must have had problem with SD card, sometimes they fail. So that is why we don't want to go that route. 
However, you need it that shields you can purchase and just you know add to the board. We decided to go for solid state um, memory, you know, kind of IC based. So it has a 16 megabyte uh, memory on board. Thank you. So uh, ask to, okay. Sorry, you the cost, the cost. Ah, sorry, the cost. Well, um, the cost is what I try to carefully, I try to answer that question carefully, okay? Let me, let me ask you a question before I answer your question, okay? All right? Are you with me? Hello? I'm I with you. you. I am okay. with you. Okay. How much, do you, how much will you pay for an Arduino board, Uno, okay? That comes with an RGB shield. That comes with a two-digit seven-segment display. That comes with an accelerometer gyroscope. That comes with a real-time clock shield. That comes with a, a 220-volt switching shield. That comes with a piezo shield. I can make some. That comes with a GSM GPRS module. I mean shield. That comes with a Wi-Fi shield. That comes with a Bluetooth shield. That comes with a memory shield of 16 megabytes, as I mentioned. That comes with a shield of push buttons for interrupt because a typical Arduino just has one button, which is a reset. But the Unity board has two other buttons besides the reset for external interrupt. I'll go further. Uh, that, that comes with uh, that comes with an LED shield of eight LEDs. Then that comes with a voltage translator shield. That is three volt to five volt, and so on and so forth. How much will you pay for such a board, please? Let me start by asking you back that question. Uh, so with that question, I think I will have to do my own cost analysis on each each modules and we structure everything before I can answer that because okay. it's a right number of modules. So right now, um, right now we're talking with the manufacturers and negotiate with TD for pi manufacturers on the board. Uh, why? Because the cost of the board depends on quantity. There's what they call MOQ minimum order quantity. Most of you understand what I'm talking about. And in the industry, when you buy transistors in bulk, ICs in bulk, your prices drop. So I hope maybe before middle of November, we should be able to finalize everything with them and get out a very clean costing of the board. The one thing I will tell you, any costing that the board comes up, it will be cheaper than any board in the market with all these features I have mentioned combined. Are you getting me? And again, this board is meant to drive digital inclusion. So we we'll do all we can to make sure that it gets across. And there's a possibility that government can come in as an intervention and even give some of these bots free. That, that is very, very possible as well. As an intervention, why not? You know, uh, government agents like Ted Fund, NCC, even need that or whatever. So we're still looking at various uh, scenario, you know, so I cannot give you the exact cost now, really. I'll be... Yeah, yeah, I'm not asking about the exact cost. I just want to know the rate because I personally, I run an home automation company in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. So we are we dealing majorly with IoT, but right now we have our own gateway and some other things. So we are still looking for a lot of collaboration with other hardware manufacturers, of, of course. So that's the reason why I'm asking for the uh, range. Well, we can talk or exchange after the uh, whole uh, meeting here. So I will just request for your contact details and we can talk later. It's okay. A uh, lot I can do is that I can link you up with the TD for Pi Hub, the manufacturers of the board. Uh, I will drop some information on the chat later, maybe towards the ending of the presentation. Thank you very much. I, I think we can, we can move ahead now. Uh, I think everybody have answered the question. Um, so basically, uh, I know everybody's waiting for the demo part. So, I mean, we've mentioned about the teaching. I mean, you know, the good thing about it is that it's very good for teaching of uh, physical computing, you know, combining hardware, software, and so on and so forth. I think I've uh, really uh, said much on this. I wouldn't want to start dwelling or going back there. You know, we all understand that, um, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, philosophy of Cash Dem Young, uh, it's very, very important to embed some of this emerging knowledge in our young people at an early age starting even from nursery school, let them play, learn how to program. And that is why MIT came up with a scratch programming. And the beauty of this very board is that, uh, you know, it is a, this, they, uh, most of them have had S4A, scratch for Arduino, okay? You can actually use your graphical interface, uh, you know, um, IDEs to program the board. Your add to block there, your Zod, and so on and so forth. With Arduino, I mean, so it's a flexible board that uh, you can program. So here is actually um, Sage. I said it's in my Tama Park. So this is actually one of the predecessors of the Unity board being used by kids already, as I mentioned to you. 
Uh, this is a Sage um, um, Center in Maitama Park where young kids are being taught how to program and they're actually doing very, very well. So their primary concentration is some secondary school, primary school kids, and they have really, really done so much for Nigeria. They've won a lot of international competition, these and projects and, and what have you. So this is actually, you know, uh, some of the kids that use the, use the predecessor of Unity Board. As a matter of fact, it was the experience we got from here and feedback we got from here that was used to develop the Unity Board. And that was how we added some of the colors, uh, the connectors, which I mentioned uh, uh, previously. You know, from the feedback we got from the field. Now, this is a blood diagram, which is very important. Now, if you look carefully, uh, this is the Atmega. John was asking the equation. So, this is a microprocessor here. This is a deep suite. This deep suite lets you select which of the features you want to use, as you can see from the blood diagram. If you want to use the solid, solid, solid state to relay, you just push it up. Your microcontroller now, the signal connects, and then start going to the solid state uh, relay. You want to use your five channel sync driver. So it, it makes it flexible, so you can select which are the functions you want. As you can see, GSM, USB, everything is here. Just have a look. Everything is here. This is SPI 60 megabyte EEPROM, the memory, using the SPI protocol. Then we'll have I2C protocol as well for your I, uh, I2C LCD display, and so on and so forth. Everything is here, OK? Here, here, you know, basically. I think I can, I can proceed. Now. These are the full specifications here, written down. Everything that is fully, you know, here, everything is here. Six degree of freedom, I mentioned already, by directional 3.3 volt to 5 volt logic level. And you know, compatible pin. Everything is already, you know, indicated here. Gas and gesture sensor, digital thermometer, and so on and so forth. I'll be sharing the presentation with um, maybe some of you. And I would like to tell us that at the end of this, Someone, one of you will win a free Unity board. I'm asking some questions. I will have just one Unity board to give out free. So try to pay attention, please. Okay. So this is basically the board layout, you know, where each of the components are described and labeled. Everything here is described. And if you pay attention here, we have your micro USB, because you know that most most phones now they use their micro USB, although USB C now is taking over. So we created that flexibility where if you have your normal USB phone cable, you can actually use it to power the board and program the board. You know, this, this, this is all called adaptation of technology, you know, knowing that most of people will not have this cable USB B, most of them will have this cable. So we implemented this here. Yeah? You can use this or you can use this. If you want extra power, you can actually plug this to your charger of two amp and that can increase any power at one. But then we already have solved that problem by having this monster regulator. As you can see the sizes here, these are five amp regulators, three to five amp. Although normally our device is three amp, you know. So these are most regulators, as you can see. Um, okay, at the bit of people are waiting. Sorry, people have been waiting to join us. And um, you know, these are layouts and what have you. Then uh, you know, I've mentioned about the use, you know, what it does, you know, creativity, especially in children by exposing them to the, the program material. Now, the big question is, all this grammar, grammar, where can we use this board? Now, I want, to, I want all of us to understand that Unity board is not a ready-made product. So people start asking questions, why is it not in a case? Why is it not a box? Let me explain this. Raspberry Pi ideally don't come in case. But the finished product made with Raspberry Pi comes in a box, in a case or enclosure. Arduino Uno, you know, mega, they don't come in a case. They come as ordinary board. But any product that is made with it comes in a case as a final product. Now, the Unity board is an open platform that facilitates your injection of your IP intellectual property. Meaning that use a Unity board to develop your product, you own it 100%. That is where you can box it up, label it, put any name, use any enclosure geometry you want, or what have you. So Unity Board is an educational and development environment, okay, which you can use now for, you know, to solve other problem and own the IP intellectual property of that problem you have solved. So areas of application straight is a learning embedded programming, developing and testing firmware. Embedded programming is very, very key. So Unity Board is a perfect environment where you can teach people embedded programming, be it in assembly language, be it in C, or what have you. It is very, very perfect. Again, you can test your firmware. That is why we created a removable socket where you can remove your Atmega 
three to eight uh, microcontroller and they put a new one and program it. You know, I mentioned start, uh, smart technology, tracking, data acquisition system, grid infrastructure monitoring. Now, let me, let me, I'll take, let me dwell a bit on the grid here and infrastructure, infrastructure monitoring. Let me ask a question now here, okay? How do you protect our transformers from being stolen? Can somebody give me an example? I have a transformer that is nowhere, maybe in the middle of the bush. And I want to be able to know when somebody is trying to steal it. Okay? That's, it falls under what we call energy infrastructure. Any idea of how it can be protected? Any idea of how you can protect such a, a transformer, you know, from being stolen? No, no idea, eh? No idea. <laughs> No, 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 think about it. I want this to be interactive. Now I've been talking a lot. Let's make it a bit. Okay, somebody is raising his hand. Good. Okay, please. Um, Oyeka, please come in. Um, I, I think from what you just explained now. Yes. Um, you can use IoT so that you can put a sensor at that, uh, uh, in that particular uh, transformer so that in such a way that one space in temper with it, for the fact that the sensor is sending signal to you wirelessly, you can be able to monitor the, the state of the transformer. Thank you. Now I'm the very, very, very wonderful. Card. Then another question is, what kind of sensor, please? What do you want to sense? What okay. are you sensing and what sensor? Okay, now um, I think you can use a, maybe motion sensor. For example, that's, is it a PIR? Is it passive infrared sensor? Is yes, it automatic? Pass yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think PIR maybe because of night, so that you can be able to detect the motion to the human, human, human body. Please, you want to talk, let me know, please. Okay, thank you, Oyeka. Let me let other people give by the Oyeka. Thank you. I'm lowering your hands. So who please, again? Sir. I've seen uh, Josiah. Josiah can talk, please, Josiah. I can lower it. All right, like Oyeka said, you can use PIR integrated with maybe a CCTV device. So you can monitor everything. Okay, that's that, that that's an idea. Uh, what? Okay, fine, fine. Not bad, not bad idea. Can we have a cheaper one, please? Okay, well, okay, fine. Let me just go straight. Uh, let me start with the last one. Okay, if I'm putting a CCTV camera there, are you with me? At what cost? You see, there's what they call cost-benefit analysis. Whenever you're developing any new product, okay. You have to check the cost, the functionality. You have to balance them up to be competitive. Very, very important. You don't use a sledgehammer to kill a fly. It doesn't happen. So putting a camera there, that's an overkill. If I put a camera, that means I have to get a higher processing power. That means I have to start looking for what to be powering the camera now. Where will I get that power supply energy to be powering it? Because all this will have to make it to be either to be covert or not to be able to be vandalized easily. I get them. I'm not saying it's not a solution. Now, the issue of your PIR is that your PIR senses the infrared um, uh, had a wavelength of the human body mainly, or even animals. What if I have a crane? I put a crane far from the transformer. I use the crane to jack it up. That means we're not sensing a human being. That means there's no alarm. So I will not go for that solution because I can use a remote inanimate uh, object to pull the transformer from there, and that's it. So for me, uh, I would have suggested, for me anyway, I'm not saying I could be the best, I just uh, rubbing my eyes. I would have suggested our IMU, Initial Measuring Unit. That is where your accelerometer comes in. That is where your gyroscope comes in. I told you that accelerometer is a three axis accelerometer. It senses acceleration in all the axes. All you have to do is the program the G level you want. Is it one G, two G? And then your gyroscope can even tell you what kind of movement or what have you. That's the problem Unity Board can easily solve. By putting this Unity Board together with the transformer, you can easily sense you know, movements and what have you. And then now somebody mentioned IoT, correct as well. That's where IoT comes in. So you can be transmitting all this signal. So you can program your microcontroller in such a way that, please though, if my G level exceeds five or two or three, raise the flag. If my tilt angle, I may have a, I may have a 90 degrees, Okay, angle, I mean, to, with respect to the horizontal plane, that my teeth angle becomes less than 90, that means I've been shifted, please raise an alarm. This, the sensor for that is your, is your IMU, that is accelerometer and your gyroscope, which is already on board. 
So that is where this grid infrastructure monitoring comes in here. The environment monitoring can be gas sensing. We all, we all know what happened in Port Harcourt when there was that heavy pollution. People never knew, knew the source of this pollution. But I bet you, by the time you introduce a very good gas sensor with an IoT uh, on, a, on an IoT platform, and you create what they call a mesh network of sensors. For example, I can decide to put each sensor on a street light stop you know, around the whole city. That means that you're sensing gas there. I know the location there. I can transmit this information to a GIS backend application, you know, GIS application. That means I can know, looking at your map, I can actually see the concentration of gases and know where this pollution are coming from. Set with smart technology and so on and so forth. So I'll just move further. Ah, I'm a bit tired. What time is it now? Are you kidding me? So um, this is actually the Unity board application video. Uh, with some of the email we sent already, we I gave you people the link to my YouTube channel for people to see where it is being applied. Because one thing is to have um, a technology and that is to apply it to solve a particular problem. So you will see some of the use cases of, um, of uh, Unity board. And other boards also, you can have other boards. And all these boards are made in Nigeria, designed in Nigeria. Now this is what we call the competitive matrix here, okay? So you have Unity board here, it has a WASP mode, Flyport Pro, U-Block, Arduino, you know, Raspberry Pi, and what have you. So these are the features. You know, I have a whole Excel sheet on this. I'll be sharing a PDF file with you. Uh, you know, that has the full um, that has the full uh, you know, the full um, features. I mean, the full breakdown. You know, so you can see the SPI here, I two C, wait time clock, everything here. Yes, yes, yes. Here, no. No, go, so on and so forth. So it's actually a very, very powerful board. Very, very powerful. Really, really powerful, you know? Then adoption strategy. Now, what we're proposing is that it's very, very important to utilize this, you know, for education. You possibly push it to primary schools as part of their curriculum. Because when you talk about, um, you know, uh, some of these emerging technologies, okay? The workforce will change, okay? Ways we are doing things, we keep changing. So if you don't embed those necessary skills, you know, your young people, they become dinosaurs, they become unemployable. So that is why it is very, very possible to create those skills that will drive a fourth industrial revolution. And that starts at an early age. You know, that is where education comes in. So collaboration means of education, private sectors, and so on and so forth. Development of curriculum around this is already what we're doing. Mentorship program, that's actually what I'm doing now. And localization of manufacturing. As I mentioned, manufacturing is in, is in done by TD45. However, my former university where I graduated from, that was so interested because I made a presentation while I was in Ukraine this time around. That is why you can see their name coming up here. They're actually very, very interested and they're very proud of the board that an alumni also was part of the development team uh, of, the, of the board. Then these are what we have gotten so far. Minister of Education this year, recognition of the board, uh, gave NIDA an award of EdTech Technology Agency, so EdTech Development Agency of the Year. You know, so that actually, you know, gives us a lot of joy. And, uh, you know, and this is in line with local content um, development, digital technology development, and so on and so forth. So this is, um, you know, um, what you're seeing here is actually a, a farm environment monitoring solution, which has been developed at the Kujie Hub. You know, is an IoT remote farm monitoring, I mean, farm environment monitoring system. It monitors your gas, it monitors the soil moisture, you know, it monitors the humidity, you know, a pH of the soil, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth, and so, you know. You know so you can see the unity body inside the box. And this is your lithium ion battery, you know. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing project right now. You can see the model as I speak with you. Okay, so uh, let me take more questions and then see how we, I can rearrange my camera for us to start um, a demo. Okay, for us to start a demo. Let me take a few questions while um, I try to, while I try to do, I mean, what do I say? Well, I try to rearrange this for demo now, okay? I really need some people to help me do some of these things here anyway. But let's see how I... So um, with respect to the PowerPoint, do we have any other question, please? Let me know. Any question, please, with respect to the PowerPoint?
there are no more questions, eh? Okay, what, what I really want to do is um, get, get this board and then um, program some of the, uh, program the, okay, to make it very fast, okay, gentlemen, to make it very, very fast, I think I will do the following. I wanted to stream data to a cloud application where some of you can see the changes of a thermometer, okay? So please, what I'll ask people to do is, uh, can you give me the APN of, uh, of um, the APN of um, APN of uh, Ether, please? Can somebody give me, give me the APN of Ether, please? Ether dot. No, no, please, give me, a, uh, you can put it on the chat so that, because what I demonstrate is on a foreign scene, so that we, I can create the program, all of us will go through the program and then, no, I, it's a lab work which all of us will take, we take part. Uh, so I'm going to use a DS1820. A Dallas thermometer is what I'll be using. Two seconds. Let me let me let somebody in here. Somebody is waiting. Sorry. I can fine. So uh, for this very okay, somebody somebody wants to ask a question. Jide, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Dr. Agu. Thank you, Jide. You're welcome. Well, to... well done, no. I've been listening. I have another meeting, so I, I may not be able to take part in your demonstration. Okay. But I want to really commend you. I mean, this is much needed, you know, for okay. the uh, for I have that is coming up. Good. And, uh, you know, you advocacy, everything that you are saying about starting in the schools, too. Yes. The Ministry of Education is very, very welcome because we need to start introducing emerging technologies, uh, catching them young. And I really want us to also play emphasis not just on the students, but even the teachers as well, so that it's not something that uh, the teachers, uh, the students may be uh, more advanced than the students. Because even if you look at um, the number of participants that are here, I can tell you that most of them appear to actually be the younger people, the students. But uh, you also need teachers, uh, train the trainer uh, type of uh, approaches as well. So, but uh, it is a very good start, and I really want to. Uh, uh, to commend you. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Thank you, Jidawe. I really appreciate yeah. you so much. Thank you very well. Yeah, well, I, I, well you. I, you know, we are ready to collaborate with uh, Nigeria Computer Society. I think people are doing a, a lot of wonderful job. So if here is a program of uh, capacity or skills uh, development, uh, you know, we'll be very uh, ready. I have uh, also here people like Harry, Harry is also a mentor in TD for Pi. Harry works for Large Comstat. He's also here on this platform. Okay. So a lot of people, I also have a, Jinaka, a colleague. Jinaka, I can see you're welcome. A colleague uh, from NIDA as well. You just yeah. to organize a program because NIDA we work with stakeholders. Once there's an organized program, we'll come and facilitate, get mentors to mentor young people. Teachers are very, very important because it's very, teachers very. Take you back to the primary school. Teachers will take you to the villages. Train the trainer philosophy. Very, very key. The longer we start this, the better, for goodness sake. Otherwise, we will not be able to play key roles, you know, in this Thank very, you. you know, modern era. Technology Thank is changing. You. Ways of doing things are changing. Jobs will be lost. And for you to be relevant, you must acquire new skills. You must, you must reskill and upskill. It is very, very key. If you remember last time, uh, Dr. Fantani mentioned, it's no longer about a certificate. It is about skills and competencies. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, thank you, Jidawi. Thank you. Okay, well done, sir. Yeah. No more questions. Can we move ahead? Okay, uh, as, as I'm saying, uh, let's do a lab work. Uh, I think a lab work makes it easier. So we'll put everything together. In this lab, lab, lab work, now we'll be measuring temperature from my office here. And I'll be varying the temperature. I'll be changing using a lighter to heat up the thermometer. And then through your, I will give you a link on the internet where you'll be seeing the temperature change, you visualize everything. So I will start the programming with you people bit by bit, okay? Over here, I have the digital thermometer, which I will show to you. So this is actually my digital thermometer here. This is it here, digital thermometer. That last one, still, you know, is, is in a steel, um, encapsulated in stainless steel. So uh, what I'll do now, I'm going to use Arduino, Arduino IDE. That's what I'm going to use to do this very uh, programming. So I will share my screen now. Let me try to share my screen immediately. Um, back off, so. Uh, two seconds, two seconds. Let me try to do this. Bear with me. Uh, we 
take time to. So I will share my screen, but I'm not seeing two seconds. I need to get this right. Two seconds, please. I need to get it right. Great. Okay. Okay. There we are. There we are. This big NTU. Okay, fine. Okay, there we are. So um. So please, uh, you may ask question in this programming, please. I will let you people speak up when you want to speak, okay? Because I will take I will take you code by code how we're able to achieve IoT, okay? Starting from, that's where the forces is coming now. I'll take you through this code for you to see the forces where they're coming in, A to Z. And then how the data is transmitted. Then I'll give you a link where you'll be seeing the data and everything. So it's very important to pay attention. So I'm opening up right now the Arduino, um, uh, the Arduino IDE, and then I'll just take through the code and then uh, we play with the thermometers here. And then we say, so while I'm waiting for this to open, I will quickly start plugging in my thermometer to save time. So this, um, this is actually the socket here. This is socket. This is socket I'm going to use to plug it in here. So I'm using a box. Once it is set, I will show all of you, please. Just to make it faster, I think. Um, Make it faster. I don't even know. Can I ask you a question, please? Uh, in the DS1820, which of the wires are, which of the wire is ground? Is it um, red? Who has used that um, thermometer before? I think it should be. I think, the, I think the black is ground. Yes, look, I've seen it already. So I just want us, I just want it interactive. I'll set it up. Then I will show all of you. What I'll do now is I'll, let me, I'll program with the USB very fast. I'll program with the USB cable. Um, so I will share my screen with the, let me share this with the, let me share what I have now so that uh, you can be looking at it. So I will share this. Oh, come on. Two seconds. Bear with me, two seconds. Wait a Captain Nassim, what's going on here? A Captain Nassim, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can yes. hear you. Yes, I can hear you. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm getting it now. Please bear with me. This is my first time uh, hosting. Okay, can I see the screen here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So, um, so I will leave you just to have a look here while I quickly do what I'm doing now, please. Eh? Just pay attention to the code and that's it, so. Uh, uh, please, I will need the APN of, uh, I will need the APN of, um, I will need the APN of El Tel Abi. It's already on the chat, you can check it. It's on the chat, okay, thank you, two seconds, so. I will plug all this and see if it is working. Yes, no, 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 this, no. Okay, two seconds, no, 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 two seconds. I'm using the wrong board. So is there any question uh, with respect to the code you want to ask, please? Any questions? So let's see. Might as well put this one here. Then <clears throat> two seconds. Then let's be let's be good. Beautiful, 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 I think. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, I think I come back here. So uh, basically, this, uh, this is a program um, I used to do a demo in Ukraine. So let me start from here. Okay. This is API key. Most of all about API key, Abby. It's like a security feature as well. Yes. I wanted to pay attention to the API key. Then I'm, I asked somebody to give an API, Abby, of Ether. 
Am I right? Yes. So what I'm yes, going to do, yes, I'll implement it here. What was it again, please? Can somebody tell me? Let me type it immediately. Internet.ng.airtel.com. No, 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 it's not it. It can't be that. Internet, internet.ltl.ng. That's what no. I'm seeing here. Huh? Internet.ltl.ng. That's what I'm seeing here. Internet. Uh, are you sure? Airtel. Internet.ng.airtel.com. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is. No, no, no. That's what I'm using. That's you cannot give an APN for. No, this That's is what I'm using on my phone. Wait. Check it on your the API is seen on the phone. And that is what I see. Internet.ng.airtel.com. Okay, wait. Internet.ng. Airtel.com. Internet.ng. Two seconds. Dot ng. Dot airtel. Eh? Airtel.com. Are you, are you sure? Okay. I'm sure. That's what I'm seeing in my phone. Okay, fine. I'm using so this Good. So what else do I need? Here? I don't think I need the other thing. I did. First, um, let me be sure that we are streaming. Let me be sure. So what I'll do now is I'll let me go to the hyper terminal and see what is happening there. So I'll go to the serial monitor here. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. And then, oh, sorry, it's, it has come to this screen here. You can see there's no, I'm not getting any signal. Why? Hmm? So have you checked, have you checked the bad rate, sir? No, there's not the bad rate. I'm not getting, I, I feel strongly that the code inside. Okay. The code inside is not um, what I'm running. No problem. So let me, let me rerun the code here. Let me just push the, let me push it to the board now. So sometimes I do them, I forget. What is this one? I don't understand. What's happening here? We need to install this library. No, 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 no. It should work now. I've not changed nothing more. Okay. No such directly. Is it possible? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, gentlemen. Can you pay attention here? Yeah? What do you see here? What, what are you seeing here? Look. Can you see where the arrow is? Look, look at my arrow. Look at here. What do you see here? Yeah, sir. It's not clear, sir. No, under. Look at it under a generic. Generic My last work on this was on STM 32F. So I forgot to switch it back to Arduino. So let's switch it back to Arduino platform. Okay, so I'll go to board. So that's the current board. Arduino Genuino here. So that is, that's why it was not. Okay. Why is it not? I'm trying to. Did it change? Okay, it has changed. Look at it come three. So uh, let's see our hyperterminal again. I think the hyperterminal should be able to come on now. Let's see. It's not coming, have you? No problem. So let me do this now. I'll just program it. I think it's coming up. It's uploaded, let's see. Uploaded, fantastic. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Okay, I have to change uh, this. Have you? I have to change this now. I have to change this, it's okay. So uh, you, you, you are basically you are following the the uh, okay okay all right this one has okay it well done the APN is very correct mm -hmm. this is the IP address now it has acquired the IP address it has connect connection is okay now okay. so what I'll do now is that I'm going to the broker platform now I'm using ThingSpeak I'm sure most of you some people must have heard about uh, ThingSpeak we yes, have okay. ThingSpeak yes, we sir. have the dots we have blink and so on and so forth okay so what i'll do now is that i'm going to i'm using here i'm using a protocol called uh, tcp sometimes can use your MQ, mqtt https and what so i'm using here can see it. i'm using my i'm using tcp here 
So the protocols they can use to push your payload to the broken arm varies. So it is up to you what you want to uh, achieve. So let's go back, go to the my team speak account. Then I'll give you the link as well. Okay, please. Are you? Is there any question you want to ask? Because sometimes when you're raising your hand, I may not see. Is it, is the code clear to some of you? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, and mind you, all this is being done for Unity, but I didn't have to put any module. I didn't have to use a breadboard to start, um, you know, okay. two, one or two things and what have you. So, I will just take here. I will take this one here. I will drop. I'll drop this here. I'll type a thing speak. Is it? The issue is that I wouldn't want you people to see my API because you can hack my board later. So I'm putting my email. I'm logging into TeamSpeak here. Then I'm going. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. What's the password here? So I'm logging into my broker platform. Okay. Uh, this case is TeamSpeak. So, so I already created them. Um, So what you do for me, if people should pay attention here. So what I'll do is that I'll go and look for the public view. Let me let me check for the public view here. If it's, um, if it's let me see the public view here. If it's, Thirty-three point seven. Is that a minute ago? <laughs> What, what, what was the other temperature? Do you have any idea? So can you, can you see the IP address? Uh, which of the IP address? Okay, let me copy it and put on the... Um, put on the okay. chart. Hmm. It's a bit of a challenge in Zoom here, but uh, can you copy this IP address? Can you people see it? Or it's not visible. Okay, I'll copy it to my Word document. Uh, okay. I'll copy it to my uh, what's it called? My notepad and increase the font, maybe. So let me see format font. So let me take this 16. Can you, can, you post, can you see it now? Yeah, 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 it's clear now. It's clear, but can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, can you log into your, you, can you put it on your browser and log in? Let me see if you're seeing what I'm seeing from here. If I start playing with the temperature now. Okay. Mm. So, have you all? Uh, okay, so I will stop sharing the screen and then work with the thermometer now. Where's the thermometer? Okay, fine. I like it. Okay, so I will stop sharing the screen because I want to demo here. Almost. Okay. Okay, fine. So um, you can see me now. This is a lighter here. So these okay. are the yeah, this is, this is the thermometer I'm having here. This is it. I've logged in. I've logged in. I can see exactly the same, the same thing. Now, okay, fine. So what I'll do is that I'm going to use this lighter now. I'm using this lighter now to heat up the thermometer. Let's see if the temperature will change. Mind you, it updates every 15 seconds. So I'm heating up the, I'm heating this up. So the temperature should rise now. So I'll leave it. Let's see what happens.
Uh, do you see any change on your own? It has not updated. It has not updated, sir. Okay. It has not updated now. It's okay. Let's see what happens. That's okay. It's taking time to update, Abby. Oh, it has updated. Mine has updated. Has yours updated? Yes. I, has yours updated? Yes, yes. Okay, beautiful. So right now, you can see that the temperature will start coming down to be taken sample. Well, because it is thick version of this is a free version, the update rate is very, very adaptive. Now the latency is high. You know, here they, they update every 15 seconds and what have you. But if it's paid for, it can actually be faster. So what we can do is that you can, you can actually monitor the graph. You can see the temperature history here. You can actually monitor the temperature history. It shows you the graph, you know? So this is a full demonstration of the forces of IoT we just did right now. So this is our sensor. Our sensor is a thermometer. And this thermometer can be anywhere in the world. Then it is giving us a, you know, the reading, you know? So with this, it can accumulate a lot of data. Like if you look at this graph here, it's written a temperature history. You can see over a long period of um, time, over a long period, you can have so much data. So if you apply your AI here, tools and whatever, you can start coming up with different, um, you know, you can start coming up with different uh, solutions, different idea. Did you notice that your red light came on now? Did you notice that your red light came on? Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the red light is an alarm system which I have created. You know, that's we put a upper threshold or lower threshold. So it's put in such a way that if it is above 40 degrees, it comes on. But that alarm system is created on this very platform. So some decisions are already made here. If this, then this. So that's why the red light is coming on showing danger. So if I had, for example, a bakery or I had a fire alarm in my house, my mobile device would have just shown me, show me this alert. And then it would can even ring me and buzz me. So all this is also part of IoT, now, as you can see. So as you can see in IoT, for you to be a big player there, you must have the ability also to program, develop embedded uh, firmware. Your hardware should be yours. That gives you a kind of originality. You should be able to, like me personally, I'm not a high level programmer. I'm not a high level. I'm low level and interfacing. So what I normally do is that I look for platforms like uh, TeamSpeak and Utilize. However, some people actually develop their own uh, broker platform. Oh, well, copy, no, copy, yeah. so, so this is exactly what we have done right now using the Unity board, as you can see. So I might as well remove the thermometer and plug the gas sensor. The same thing will happen. I can plug the humidity sensor. You'll be getting the whole um, you know, values that are coming uh, you know, on, on board here. Let me take some questions, please. A quick question, Colin. I'll come in. I'll come in two seconds, please. Let me listen. I don't need this thing anymore. Let me put my mouse. And um, okay. It's okay. 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 Um, oh, yeah, guys, turn up his hand. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So when, uh, when you started uh, showing the screen for the code, you made mention of something. You, you talked about P, uh, TCP. Yes, TCP, yes. So do we have any other uh, method we can use to, to put the data to the, to the broker site? A thousand protocol. Then if we have other ones, what are the, like, what, what should you consider when choosing anyone? Well, again, you see, uh, again, again, it's the weight. MQQT is a very light protocol, okay? It's very, very light. I get it, me? Because when you transmit data, to a broker, there's what we we'll call, um, you know, payload. Payload is your useful information. But beside the payload, our other frame, what they call data framing. I may have a 28-bit data, but inside that 28-bit, the most important one, the payload may be actually be very small. I get it every, so it's a light protocol. And okay. so that, you know, you know, it depends on, on situation. Some are faster, some are heavier, and again, it depends on the broker. Some brokers will tell you exclusively, they like only FTP. So we tell you exclusively MQQT. That, as I mentioned before, we have brokers like Blink, Ubi Dot, and so on and so forth. So it all depends on the, um, how do I put it now? On the, on, on the broker, what have you. I get it. But in my own case, I'm using um, 
uh, FTP. Why? Because actually, when I started writing the code for this TeamSpeak, plat uh, TeamSpeak broker, I was having an issue before I mastered it. So I, I moved from HTTPS and then went to FTP. It was, it, it was it FTP that I got it for. Then later I came to HTTPS and actually found my mistake. So you're free to use whichever one. It's not, um, it's, it, there's no law guiding you per se. So it depends on the technology they're using at the broker. That's the cloud. Then it depends on the data you're paying. How much are you paying per pay, pay megabyte or what have you? I can okay, see Yes. Yes, sir. Is there another person I want to ask you a question, please? Let me know. Okay, Aja. Sorry, Aja, is it raising up? Aja, please, you can say something. Yes, sir. So uh, I can hear you. I can hear you, Aja, yes. Okay, sir. I, what I want to ask is that, um, how can I get the Arduino IDE? Okay, beautiful. Um, I must be, I must say I'm sorry because I assume that um, some of us are already using um, Arduino. You just Google it, it's Arduino CC, Arduino.cc. Go to that website. To it's up. Download it is free of charge. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, fine. Any other questions? If there are no questions, let me start. Let me see how I can start um, sharing um, some files. Let me see. I'm really trying to. Can somebody tell me how to share a file here? Or can I take it to the chat? Will chat take it? How do I share files on this platform, please? Any idea? Mm -hmm. I think you can share files. Huh? I don't think you can share files. There is no support file sharing, sir. OK. There's no, OK, OK. So, Emails. Okay, well, what I'll do is that I'll write on the chat. Uh, two seconds. Let me write on the. Uh, let me. Two seconds. I'm struggling with this, really. Okay, fine. So I'll write a website here Unity board.ng. Unity board.ng. Check this site. It's not private. Oh, I'm sending it to. I should be sent to everyone. Sorry. Can see that? Yes, sir. So I can share file. I've seen file. File file came up now. There's no file here. I saw file coming up. Now. I think I can download from my PC, but I'm trying to see. Okay, two seconds. I'm trying to see how. I'll go to my computer now. Let me let me see what and what I can I can download very very. On your computer, you can do. It. Yes, I'm trying to get something for you people here that we slay more. So just give me time. We'll have like six minutes, man. We'll be ending. So please, uh, I'll be sending um, I'll be sending a survey, which is very, very important. That will help me know how to prepare for the next lecture because this is our first lecture, and this will be a continuous uh, process. So the next one is that I'll be taking it as a lab work now. The next ones I'll be doing uh, intermittently. So it is very important for me to know how best to carry out um, you know, the the presentation and what have you. So I will quickly, I'm trying to see. Unity for present to the views here. Yeah. Um, two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. Two seconds, I'm trying, I'm strong. Please let me be taking some questions while I'm trying to sort out something here. To save time. I'm, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to move some documents. I, I don't know why this is not two seconds. OK. I'm actually trying to see. Two seconds. Let me go to my. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Well, my, my question is quite simple. My name is David Erebo. I represent the new Nigerian. Um, we David. want to first of all, say, yes, sir. David, David is actually Thank my class. Thank you so much. The work of David. Yes. Thank you for what you are doing. It is a good mentoring program. Uh, we in diaspora are fully aligned with you. Um, I've got my colleague here, Solomon, and um, 
we just want to say well done. Thank you so much. And we hope that we can align with you fully to develop more things for the children on ground. I thought I'll just quickly say that now. Thank you so much. Yeah, David, you're welcome. Um, as I mentioned already, uh, actually, uh, David Erebo is my classmate in the Federal Government College in Duan. We attended the same secondary school with him. A very, very good friend of mine is, is actually calling from the UK and there have been so much programs to promote our youth in areas of capacity development, you know, especially. So I'm very, very happy to have you people here. Just as I mentioned already, collaboration is very, very key. So maybe Dave, you want to share some of your coordinates on the chat so that people can know more about some of the good works you're doing so that they can spread the good news here. In Nigeria. So you're free to put some of, one or two things on the chat, on the WhatsApp, sorry, on the Zoom chat. That will help them, you know, you know, get to this. Thank you so much. Mm. You're welcome. Is there another question here? I'm trying to share some documents here, but my fear is that, uh, you know, I, I I'm just struggling not to send the wrong one here. So what I'll do is, um, I, I don't know. Okay, fine. Let me just make it easier for you. Very, very easy now. Let me make it easy now. I'll just go to my webinar. Whatever I have you on webinar is what I'm pushing out immediately. Okay. This is it. So I've, I'm, I've shared the PowerPoint with you people here. Can, can, you, can you people see what I'm sharing, please? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Now, I, I want to share the mapping. I, I want to share the peripheral mapping of Arduino uh, to Unity Board. So those, those are that I used to program in Arduino will understand how to easily migrate. I will share that, two seconds. Um, two seconds, now I'm trying to go through my files very, very fast. Okay, this is it. So where's the peripheral? Oh, come on. Yeah. Introduction draft. Mm. This is a bit strange, anyway. It's a specification. Okay, specification is here. I've seen specification. So I'll give you, I'm pushing specification on to you people again. Okay. Uh, what was this one? Unity for introduction, well, introduction, competitive. Ah, no, no. Okay, fine. I think, um, okay, if there are no questions, I would like to thank all of you for making time out of no time. We still have 18 people to be frank. I, I wasn't expecting much people, so I'm quite excited myself. So please, uh, I'll be sending so, a survey for. Or can I ask somebody to do that for me? Is it possible for somebody to help me do create a Google form and then send the service so I can push it to everybody's email? Is there any volunteer here, please, that could help out? No? I could give you a, a draft, a rough um, two seconds. That will make it faster for me. Wait, I have a, a draft here. I'm already, I've got some of the equations. Maybe we could identify the most important one here. So I'll put it here on the chat, eh? Do I upload it as a file or on the chat? Yes. Let me upload right. it as a file. I think it's better. Let me put it as a file. I really need somebody to do this very fast for me, please, if you don't mind. All right, go on, I, I can do that for you. Okay, thank you. So I'm sending you a, a, a notepad document, a notepad document, survey is written. Okay, I think it's to everybody. Mm. To say survey. So it's just some, it's a rough, a rough information I got. So you decide which are the parts you feel, and then create it on Google Form. Don't make it to be too many questions. People don't have time to feel too many things, please. Otherwise, they will not feel. So where can I get it, please? Um, within the hour, is that okay, or do you need it? Within 20 minutes, is that okay? Because people will not go back to the mailbox later. Okay. So who am I up to now? Is he, who is that? No, this is uh, Solomon. Solomon, Solomon. Solomon Aleto, yes. Solomon? Yes. Okay, I'll just drop mine. Let me, let me. Okay, podcast or technology from the new Nigeria. Okay, fine. Somebody is sharing some information here. 
Solomon, eh? Yes. Okay, I'll just drop my number here. Or the chat 0 is 7 317 okay? Okay, that's my number, eh? Solomon. Okay. I'm on WhatsApp. I'm on WhatsApp on this number. Yeah. Okay, so Solomon is part of TNN, eh? Is that a quick question I can ask? Please feel free. Okay, feel free. the analogy you gave before with the transformer, you know, in terms of if someone is trying to steal your transformer and they lift it up, can the same um, not be applied in terms of notification, yeah? You know what you did? And we got the red blob uh, glowing up to show that the temperature was coming up. Yeah, yes, can that, yes. Can, it, can the board be used in that instance as well if something is being stolen to notify you of some um, interference or something? Absolutely, um, absolutely. Let me explain something to you, okay? The broker platform is like, is like an AI platform already, okay? It has an analytical tool. So all it means that it, it, it just gets the raw data from the board, okay? It just gets the raw data. So when it gets the raw data now, this is where we implemented uh, what they call threshold. Oh. Yes, you know, I implemented the threshold here. So it is the broker that is getting the data, processing it, making sense out of it. So the moment it sees that it is higher, it flags it. So the same can be used for your transformer. You can say that if the, if the tilt angle of your transformer is less than 90 degrees, or greater than 90 degrees, you raise a flag. Or if the acceleration, you know, there's a shock when you move something that is not, when something is static, it's yeah. still it's acceleration. Once you start moving it, there's acceleration, you know, it can be negative or positive. So you can put the threshold, it will flag it, absolutely. So, so it will come up as a, it can come up as a notification which can then be customized in the end. It can ring your phone, it can send the SMS, wow. email, it can flag, it's, it's different kind of notification. What you see here that came up as red light can be an SMS. Yes. Okay. okay. Sent to your phone as well. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, more questions, please. Now, again, um, I mentor in a hub I mentioned. I'm a mentor in a hub called td 4 pi.org. I'm sharing it. Dot ng. They are doing a lot of good work there. Okay. They are doing a lot of good work. So, uh, Dr. Yekini, do you want to say something? Dr. Yekini, also a colleague at work. Colleague at Linda, Engineer Kaka too, or Dr. Kaka, and some other people. So thank you everybody for attending. So if you have uh, more questions, oh, okay, this, uh, okay, fine. Thank you very, very much. So I will not log off until you people try to log off. I'll be doing all that. So if you have other questions, fine, but I'm officially ending the webinar now. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to having you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye.